Did you know that Disneyland calls their employees cast members? Why do you think they do this? Is it to inflate their egos and make them feel special? Is there some kind of weird tax loophole that means they don't have to pay for sick leave or their 401k or superannuation as we call it here in Australia? Or is it because calling them cast members conveys a super clear message as to what their role as an employee actually means? Was that confusing? What I simply mean is it helps the employees make decisions within their roles without having to ask a manager or a team leader what to do. Can you imagine if Mickey suddenly said, OK, folks, that's the end of my shift, and then took his head off and sparked up a ciggy? That's cigarette in Australian. Not only would Mickey be fired on the spot, but he'd traumatise a bunch of bloody children. And Mickey can't do that. And the employee knows this because he's not an employee. He's a cast member. He's a character. He's Mickey. And Mickey would never do that. Think about it. Disneyland is a massive entertainment complex with various departments, including ride operations, guest services, food services, entertainment, maintenance, and a whole lot more. And this requires a significant workforce to ensure the park's smooth operation and the best experience for its visitors. But how do you keep everyone on the same page? With one simple message. You're not an employee, you're a cast member. The term cast member conveys a clear image. It conjures up the idea of people actively engaging in entertainment rather than just doing routine tasks. Referring to staff as cast members is also unexpected and breaks away from the conventional terminology of employees. This unexpectedness grabs attention and makes their staff curious, prompting them to think about the distinction and make decisions accordingly. It also adds a layer of credibility as it implies a certain level of dedication and professionalism. It suggests that the staff are not just fulfilling tasks, but are actively contributing to the unique experience that Disneyland aims to provide. It implies a sense of excitement, entertainment and showmanship and contributes to the larger narrative that Disneyland is trying to create, an immersive and magical world. And the use of performers fits into the story they're telling about the park's environment and the roles of the staff within that story. Now, what I'm referring to here is known as the commander's intent. The one thing that absolutely has to happen above all else. Simples! Now, this is a great example of a company getting the commander's intent just right. But it's important to think this through before you start throwing around mantras willy-nilly. So you know who else tried to do this? Well, have you ever eaten at Subway? They call their staff sandwich artists. But imagine if you went into a Subway to order a foot-long chicken avocado sandwich and the dude behind the counter started to experiment with colours, decided he only wanted to use earthy tones and then proceeded to mash slices of tomato into the bread, dab some lettuce with sweet chilli sauce and begin sprinkling some carrot shaving salt bay style. You'd be like, Oi, dickhead, what are you doing? Just make the friggin' sandwich already. And they'd be like, Don't rush me, man. I'm an artist. They're not artists, they're sandwich makers. And calling them sandwich artists doesn't help anyone. So they've totally screwed the pooch on this. I'm not making this shit up, by the way. All of this comes from a book titled Made to Stick, a deep dive into the art of crafting messages that stick like glue. It's a good book. You should read it. Or just trust me and get cracking on crafting your own sticky ideas to help your agency become more efficient and keep your team aligned. So, what are you going to call your team? Starbucks call them partners to encourage them to make decisions as if they were an owner. Automatic call their support staff happiness engineers. If they got the product right in the first place, they wouldn't need so many. Anyway, my point is, keep it simple, stupid. Marie Kondo, a Japanese organising consultant and author, became a global sensation with her unique approach to decluttering and organising. And in a world often overwhelmed by material possessions and plastic shit, Kondo's method offered a refreshing take on simplification. Kondo's approach, known as the KonMari method, is centred around the idea of keeping only the items that spark joy. She encourages people to declutter their homes by category, clothing, books, paperwork, family members, rather than by location. This systematic approach helps individuals confront their belongings and make intentional decisions about what to keep and what to let go of. The KonMari method gained popularity not only for its practicality, but also for its emphasis on mindfulness and a simplified lifestyle. Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, became an international bestseller, and her philosophy resonated with people seeking simplicity and order in their lives. And it somehow managed to completely escape my wife's attention. 
Marie Kondo's genius of decluttering and finding joy in simplicity isn't just for tidying up, it's a goldmine for business too. Picture this, streamlined operations and a crack team of digital ninjas, laser focused on your core values and decisions that pack a punch. Think workplaces buzzing with good vibes and customers high-fiving their stellar experiences. This approach isn't just about cutting the fluff, it's about igniting innovation, nailing communication and optimizing your resources like a pro, like a maverick. Plus, it's a win for the environment, and it keeps us sharp for whatever the market throws our way. In a world where chaos reigns, mastering simplicity could be the secret weapon for growth and winning the game. So, what are you gonna do to simplify your life and your agency? Will you clear your cluttered corners, diligently do your dirty dishes, tackle tough tidbits until they're tidy, and then sweep, swab, and scrub your sanctuary until you finally sink into a state of serenity? <sighs> Or when it comes to simplifying your agency, will you carefully craft an elite and eloquent elevator pitch? Conjure up your core values that truly define your company culture? Or will you tackle the tedious tasks that totally test your talents and transform through targeted top tier training? To put it simply, if you really wanna simplify things in your agency, check out this free training called The Simplified Agency. Okay folks, click the thumb that points up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Troy Dean, don't smoke cities.